Welcome back everybody, I'm Jason. True story here, the other night I was taking a walk and it was very, very dark at night and I was passing some trees. I noticed in those trees were some birds which were completely motionless and I started to wonder if they were actually sleeping. I never spent too much time thinking about if birds sleep or not and so I started thinking, why don't birds fall off their perch when they sleep? Now this has to be sort of a daily thing for them. Obviously it's something that's happening every single day, and so they must be pretty good at balancing, right? Or maybe they just have a really tight grip or something. So to really boil it down to a single question, at nighttime when birds sleep, how do they stay balanced on the tree limbs? Now honestly, as in life is the same in science, it seems like a simple question. Most of the time simple questions don't have super simple answers and you can go a little deeper to really understand what's going on. And as I researched this one, I learned that the answer here involves some really cool adaptation in the evolution of birds. So let's ruffle some feathers and get started. Now, first things first, do birds actually sleep when they're perched or do they find a cozy spot to lie down? Well, the answer to this question actually surprised me. Most birds actually do sleep when they're perched on a branch or on a wire. Now, unlike humans who need to lie down to get comfortable, birds are pretty content to catch their Zs while standing on a branch, a wire, or any other suitable perch. Now, this got me thinking, which admittedly is a pretty dangerous thing all by itself, that surely this can't be very comfortable for birds. But for birds, it's actually just as natural as sleeping in bed is for us. So they've actually evolved over millions of years to be perfectly adapted to sleeping in this position. So the next natural question is, how do they manage this? How can they stay balanced when they're off in a dream state, presumably when their brain shuts down for rest? And the secret actually lies in a nifty bit of anatomy called the flexor tendon mechanism. That's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of what's going on here. And here is actually how it works. So when a bird is flying and it lands on a perch, its leg bends at the ankle. Now this bending causes the flexor tendon in the leg to tighten up. Now these tendons run down the back of the leg and they connect to the bird's toes. Now here's sort of the punchline here. As these special tendons tighten, they automatically cause the toes to curl around the perch. The real magic here happens because of the way these tendons are structured. They create kind of a locking mechanism that doesn't require any active muscle control to maintain. In other words, once a bird flies and settles down on a perch, it can relax completely without fear of losing its grip. It's kind of like having a built-in safety harness. Now, interestingly, this adaptation is so effective that a bird can even sleep through a strong thunderstorm with very, very high winds or rainstorms without really falling off. Of course, there's a limit to this, obviously. But the tighter that the bird sits on the perch, the tighter its grip becomes. It's a truly elegant solution to the problem of sleeping in high places. And the secret here is that the bird doesn't have to expend any extra energy in order to keep a tight grip because the weight of the bird and the way the flexor tends tendon operates is it grips. The more the bird sits with gravity down onto this tendon mechanism, the more the grip actually grabs the branch or the wire. Now you might be wondering, does part of the bird's brain stay active to maintain balance while the rest of the bird sort of gets rest or goes to sleep? And the answer touches on another honestly truly fascinating aspect of sleeping birds. Now birds, like many other animals, can engage in something called unihemispheric slow wave sleep. Now this is a big fancy word, but basically all it means is that one half of the brain can sleep while the other half of the brain remains alert. Now this ability certainly is not unique to birds. It's also seen in some marine animals and some reptiles, but birds have truly perfected the art. 
In fact, when sleeping on a perch, many birds will actually keep one eye slightly open corresponding to the awake half of their brain, and this allows them to remain vigilant for predators even while getting some much needed rest. I mean, you have to think about their life. They are always under threat of something coming and getting them, eating them, or even just natural environment causing problems for them. Now this is kind of crazy. Some birds can actually even control how much of their brain sleeps based on how safe they feel in their environment. But getting back to the main question of balancing when they're going to sleep, it's important to note that the unihemispheric sleep isn't really necessary for birds to maintain their grip on a perch. So that flexor tendon mechanism that we talked about a few minutes ago, that actually works whether the bird is fully asleep or whether it's partially uh, alert. This unihemispheric sleep, which is, remember, one half of the brain going to sleep, the other half of the brain staying alert, it's really more about staying safe from predators than preventing falls. Now, birds are fascinating, and research in this area is ongoing, and scientists are continually discovering new aspects of avian sleep. So, for example, recent studies have shown that in some birds, like frigate birds, they can even sleep while they are flying. Let me say that again. They can actually go to sleep while they are flying. These birds can ascend to great heights and then enter short periods of sleep while slowly gliding back down. So you can talk about the ultimate multitasking going on in that situation. So now let's take a second to address the elephant in the room, or should I say, the ostrich in the room. What about bigger birds? Do larger birds sleep standing up too, and how do they balance? So first, we obviously need to talk about the ostrich, the largest bird in the world. They do indeed sleep standing up, but their adaptation is a bit different from their smaller cousins. So it turns out that ostriches have a specialized tendon in their leg called the intertarsal joint lock. So when the ostrich is standing, this joint locks into place, and that allows the bird to remain upright with minimal muscular effort. And as you might imagine, that's really important for an ostrich because if you've ever seen one, they're very, very large animals and they have kind of tiny legs for such a large body. Now that adaptation isn't just for sleeping, it also allows them to conserve energy while standing for long periods during the day. So when an ostrich needs to move, it can quickly unlock the joint and take off at an impressive running speed. Now, other large birds, like flamingos, for example, are famous for sleeping while standing on only one leg. Now, this isn't just for show. It actually helps them conserve body heat. So by tucking one leg up into their feathers, they reduce the amount of heat lost through their unfeathered legs. But what about nests? Don't birds sleep in their nest? I mean, I was young. I just always assumed that birds laid down and went to sleep in their nest. Well, it depends on the bird and on the time of year. So during breeding season, many of these birds will actually sleep in their nest to incubate eggs or to protect young. However, outside of breeding season, most adult birds actually prefer to sleep on branches or other perches where they feel safer from predators. Think about it from a bird point of view. You're thinking about snakes. You're thinking about other rodents. You're thinking about things that are on all four legs, right? Obviously, they can live in trees as well, but by elevating yourself as far away as you can, then you're naturally going to be safer. Now, some birds, like cavity nesting species such as woodpeckers, may sleep in tree hollows or nest boxes year-round. Now, these enclosed spaces offer protection from both predators and harsh weather. Now, if you've ever seen video from the space station or any other spacecraft, you know that it's always storming somewhere on Earth. Lightning, thunder happening somewhere all the time. And birds, they really can't exactly go inside for shelter most of the time. So what happens when a bird is caught in bad weather while they are sleeping? Do they wake up or do they sleep through it? So surprisingly, thanks to their remarkable adaptations, most birds can actually sleep through moderate wind and moderate rain. Their strong grip on the perch, maintained by the flexor tendon mechanism we talked about a second ago, keeps them secure even in super windy conditions. Now there's a limit to this, obviously. In a super big thunderstorm, a hurricane or a tornado or something, birds are not just gonna be hanging out in the branches. 
And actually, birds aren't reckless anyway. They're generally very, very good at predicting weather changes, and they will actually seek shelter if they sense a severe storm approaching. In fact, many birds will actually move to more protected areas like dense foliage or the leeward side of a tree trunk to avoid the worst in really bad weather. Now, this is actually really interesting. In extreme conditions, some birds may actually enter a state called torpor, which is a type of short-term hibernation where they lower their own internal body temperature and slow their metabolism to conserve energy. Now, this can help them survive through periods of cold or food scarcity. And it kind of goes without saying that not all birds are the same and different species have different tolerances for weather. Seabirds, for instance, are very well adapted to sleeping through very strong winds and even while bobbing on the rough seas. Now, as I've been thinking about this, there is a question that immediately came to mind and I'm sure it occurred to you as well. Do birds poop when they're actually sleeping up high in a tree? Well, the short answer is, well, there's no simple answer for every bird, but in general, no. Birds, like many animals, have evolved to avoid soiling their sleeping areas, to say it in a nice way. Now, this makes sense from a survival standpoint. A nest or a favorite perch that's constantly covered in droppings would be really unsanitary and could actually attract predators. Now, most birds have what's called a cloaca, which is a multi-purpose opening for their digestive, urinary, and also reproductive tracts. So before settling down to sleep, most birds typically enter this cloaca, and this is why you might often see birds pooping, for lack of a better word, right before they tuck in for the night. However, nature isn't always so neat and it's almost never so tidy. While it's rare, some birds might actually occasionally relieve themselves during sleep, especially if startled or if they've eaten something that disagrees with them. But this is the exception rather than the rule. Some birds, particularly swifts or frigate birds that spend long periods of time in flight, have actually adapted to be able to sleep and defecate simultaneously while airborne. Now that is the ultimate in multitasking. So the next time you're walking under a tree full of sleeping birds, you can probably leave the umbrella at home. Just don't linger too long under any trees at dawn or when the birds are beginning to wake up and doing their morning business. And the next time you see a bird peacefully snoozing on a wire, you know the incredible adaptations that allow it to rest easy without fear of falling. From the ingenious flexor tendon mechanism to the ability to sleep with one eye open and also to have one half of your brain on while the other half of your brain is off, birds have evolved a remarkable suite of traits that allow them to catch their Zs in the treetops. I'm Jason, thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate all of your comments and feedback, so please drop a comment down below. Let me know, what did you think of this? Did you want more detail? Did you want less detail? I love learning things and sharing it with you, so I really appreciate your feedback. And as you walk uh, under a set of trees, as you see some birds that are totally motionless and probably asleep, I want you to look up with wonder and awe and always stay curious. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.